to the Crewcast, the cruise live podcast about video games and all things crew. Join us and many of your favorite crew members as we review games, talk about the new crew series, answer your questions, and much more. So sit back, relax, and enjoy this episode of the Crewcast. All right, everybody, welcome to our first YouTube crewcast. Now, we've done some, some podcasts in, in the past, and we've done them on Twitch. But this is what we're going to really call our first episode, because this is when we've actually, we're going to try to get serious here. So uh, let me first introduce all we, all we have here. We have Piper, we have Danny, Hello. and we have Gizmo. Hello. Hello. So there'll be the four of us in this first podcast. Now, what we're going to try to do, we're going to try to do these every week. Uh, we're recording this on Friday, and we're going to start airing these on YouTube on Saturday. Now, one thing we would love to know from you guys would be if you want to see us take this podcast uh, to an audio form and put it on something like iTunes or some of the other podcast aggregator sites so that you guys can listen to this on your mobile devices. If you're happy with just watching it on YouTube, uh, let us know that too. But we're kind of curious what people would like to see. But the goal is to do these every week, air them on a Saturday, uh, and if people want to, we'll also convert it to an uh, MP3 podcast to put up on iTunes and such. Now, we're going to talk about a lot of different things on these podcasts. Uh, gaming news, uh, gaming reviews, previews, crew news, uh, just information about what we're up to. Uh, we'll try to mention some deals on games out there, you know, like a deal of the week in case you're looking to buy some games when they're on sale. And we also want to answer your questions. But we will also go into other topics, not in this first episode, but we will start doing things like TV shows, uh, reviews of them, or just tell them which TV shows we're watching, movies that are upcoming that we're looking forward to, maybe review a movie that some of us have seen. Uh, we're trying to do a lot of different media type things. So we hope you guys will like this. But with that, we're going to jump right in to our news. All right, our first gaming news topic. This one's about EA, Electronic Arts. They were nominated for the second year in a row, the worst company in America. What are your guys' thoughts on this one? It's... I liked... Go, Papa. I liked what they said in the article, human piggy banks. They're making us like human piggy banks, or their human piggy banks. Um... Because, I mean, the only game that I really play of EA is Sims, and I think that they must make so much money with their expansion packs. Like, you know, Sims 2 came out, and they had all their expansion packs, and I bought them all, and I was playing them. And then Sims 3 came out, and I was like, nope, not going to fall for it this time. And what did I do? Ended up buying expansion packs, which I have stopped now. But... They just like making money. But, like, does this mean the worst company in the world? Like, I'm not, not sure in the world, but like in America, as in, like, the actual physical company, not, like, gaming company, but, like, every single company. Yes. Like, this thing to, like, KFC and McDonald's and all those terrible other companies. It's a gaming company. How can it be the worst company? Like, they make games. Come on. Yeah, but it's more the way that they're they treating it. people. Yeah, I mean, it's the way they're, they're doing not... it. And their attitude and stuff amazing. like that. Amazing. I'll agree there, but it's a gaming company. Come on. Worst company? They don't deserve the worst company title. What would you give the worst company title to then? KFC. <laughs> Seriously. Or like a company that harms animals or like tests things on animals like without permission. And There's a lot more backroom things that are worse than EA. Come on. I'm sure there's a lot more things which are worse than KFC. True. I so saw where they like where they do things like with Day One DLC. They they put they push okay. Day One DLC. I, I will on agree with you almost there. every game I, that they release. I hate that stuff. I will agree with you there. So stupid. Does it really deserve the worst company title again? Well, uh, my thoughts on this is I kind of agree with Giz here. They they aren't the worst company in America. I mean that's just insane. 
there's many companies who do more harm. I mean, the first year they won it, they actually beat out, I think, one of the banks. I don't remember if it was Bank of America. Uh, I may be wrong, so I don't really want to guess which bank it was. Uh, but this was one of those banks that had given out a lot of uh, basically bad mortgage loans to people. In a sense, what happened, because I know you guys are all from the UK, the banks were giving loans to people who really didn't have the income and everything else to be able to handle it. So a lot of people lost their homes. A company like that, obviously, worst company or one yeah. of the top companies. Problem is for a company like EA, and I, and I don't like the stuff EA does. I mean, I think of all the game development companies out there, they're one of the worst. Uh, but this is Consumerist.com that does this. It's it's a website. Uh, most of the people here in America, or even whoever abroad, if people could vote abroad, I'm not sure if it was locked by region, they don't even get online. They don't go to Consumerist. When once these things come out, like oh, vote for the worst company, you know. Gamers in droves go and vote for uh, EA. Uh, so I think, you know, it's gamers hate EA more than they hate any of these other companies <laughs> is probably what we should say because they came out in droves. And, and that's kind of like a, a topic that we weren't going to talk about, but it kind of relates to this where uh, Notch and Jeb are like number two on Tom's top 100 list. Yeah. People. I mean, that's, again, I mean, no offense against um, – you know, Notch and, and Jeb, but there's a lot of people who do a lot of good uh, in the world um, that maybe deserve to be higher up. But because so many M Minecraft fans go vote, you know, it pushes them to the top. Uh, in a way, it's nice to see the gaming community get some recognition. Also, in a way, that's kind of misusing their power. True. <laughs> and that happens a lot. I mean, a lot of times you'll see like where a game company or something happens where a company's like, vote for what you want to see us do or what you want to name this product. And somebody puts in like a joke thing and then everybody jumps on the bandwagon, all these, all these uh, people in the community that's behind it. And it gets to the top and a company then has to like backpedal because they, they don't want to do it. Um, but there is a lot of power behind uh, people in the internet community who you know, can rally up for causes. Uh, but I mean, I don't think EA is the worst company. I think they're the worst game comp development publisher uh, company out there. Let's move on. Now, this one is a very interesting one. Again, this kind of shows the power of the internet and what can happen. Uh, but a guy named Adam Orth, and I don't know if I'm pronouncing his last name right, it's O-R-T-H. He was tweeting to a friend of his, and he makes this post where he says, you know, I'll, I'll kind of go through the post here. He says, sorry, I don't get the drama around having an always-on console. Every device now is always on. That's the world we live in. Now, let me make sure I mention, too, this uh, Orth guy works at Microsoft uh, at the time. And then his buddy responds back, did you learn nothing from Diablo 3 or SimCity? You know some people's internet goes out, right? Deal with it is a blank response, a word that I can't say. <laughs> uh, and then Orthy responded, which is what his Twitter name is, electricity goes out too. And then his buddy was like, well, you've lived in L.A., San Francisco, Seattle, very connected places. Try living in Janesville, Wisconsin, or Blackbirds, Virginia. And then this is when it was really bad, because that Orth guy responds, why on earth would I live there? Ooh. <laughs> now, uh, the Internet got enraged by this, and people were... Uh, screaming left and right, you know, that this is just typical of a, you know, of a corporate company, you know, having their heads up there, you know what's, uh, and not really seeing the big picture, you know, and, and just being very uppity. But uh, an interesting thing happened, because this has, I think this happened over the weekend, but come Monday morning, Microsoft, of course, tweets that this guy does not speak for, you know, Microsoft, uh, you know, so he wanted to try to distance himself from it. And then later we hear that he resigned. Now, uh, we don't know if he was re he resigned or he was kind of forced to or be fired, but he resigned from Microsoft. All of this over this uh, situation. So, I mean, any thoughts on this from you guys? It's kind of ridiculous that why would someone do that? Like he has a, a job where obviously he's somewhat in the limelight because he works for the company and he takes stuff like that. Why would you do that? Maybe he doesn't know any better. 
But he just sounds like a complete tool. <laughs> Seriously. Like respect other people. Like he's been he's blatantly dissing on the other areas of America. Like I think that kinda of like less um I'm trying to think of a word, like less known areas. Like the poorer areas or something. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I'm just saying. No, I'm saying. I'm saying every every area, every person deserves respect. And the way that he was talking, it seems like he was dissing on those areas. Like, why would he live there? Well, why not? It's it's part of planet Earth. Have I mean, some respect. I mean, America is a very uh, big um, country, and we have a lot of land. We have a lot of places where uh, some people have to use satellite to get internet, and that's horribly slow. Uh, oh, some wow. people are some people are so far out in the country that cable companies can't deliver uh, maybe a robust, reliable connection or the speeds are so slow. But also don't forget too, always on, if your internet is always on, that doesn't mean that some router doesn't go out somewhere, or something breaks down where you can't reach micro, mind, uh, Microsoft servers or maybe their servers go down. If that happens and then you can't play, that'll be very frustrating for gamers. And I think that's mm. why there's a lot of upset feelings on this. But what's really funny about this subject is Microsoft has never really officially said it's going to be always on. In fact, there are reports that kind of hint it, that it won't be, that this will not be an issue. Um, I think what some people are hearing is they plan on making like a smaller Xbox that has no drive and it's more like a TV device. For that, to play games, you have to have an internet connection because it doesn't have like, uh, you know, CD slots. But, you know, it's all, a lot of it's all talk at this point. Um, the guy himself, uh, Adam, said that this was just a joke exchange with his buddy that they mess with each other. So he's pretty much claiming that it wasn't what it, the way it really intended to be. Uh, but obviously, Microsoft didn't seem to think so or whatever. But, or, you know, yeah. he just couldn't handle it and resigned. But it's just a very interesting thing. It tells you, you know, even if you work for a company and you're at home tweeting at night, um, your employer will watch what you say, and it could affect you. This is the same thing as like Facebook. Um, a lot of HR departments try to look yes. in, into employees' Facebooks to see what they're up to, and if it's and that person's maybe an, an appropriate employee. So, with the in, invent of all this great technology we have, uh, you know, you really have to be careful what you say or do on a lot of online uh, forums or methods of going online. Well, it's just like everyday life, really. You know, if you can't say something nice, don't say anything at all. And I think the internet gives, and I can't say the word, it makes you anonymous to other people and they don't know who you are. And so you can say anything and everything, but, you know, not everything, Not you can't get away with it. All right, moving on. Minecraft is going to add horses, seasons, and a new launcher. Um, I think I also heard uh, that they're adding, like, if you stay in an area too long, that the mobs get more aggressive. Something Seriously? Like yeah. Yeah, I've heard that. Now, oh, uh, my goodness. I will say that they yesterday, Thursday, they did put out uh, the new uh, beta of the launcher. And, of course, yeah. you got horses. I don't think seasons have been implemented yet. But we did get horses. We did get um, some other stuff. We did a video yesterday. Uh, Thursday, showing all that stuff. So you guys can check that out if you want. What's your guys' thoughts on all these talked about additions to Minecraft? Some out now in the new beta launcher, some not out. I like it. I like how they're evolving Minecraft. Um, yeah, it's good. Uh, the horses, I mean, I'm not a horse person. I like the idea of having another mode of transport which makes you faster on land. Plus, you'd have to dig up lots of wheels and iron and stuff. I like that they're working with the, is it the more creatures guy that made the horses yeah. and stuff? Yeah, he did the ho worked with them on the horses for this. Because that could mean that we could get like new water mobs or some other, other type of mob in the world other than them just adding horses. So I'm, like, I'm looking forward to what they do in the snapshots going forward. <laughs> no wonder you guys couldn't hear me, I was muted. 
Horses are not just a mode of transport. Horses are a new pet, a new addition to the land, a new mob, a new creature to, to look after. I'm so excited for horses. Like Danny said, Mo Creatures horses, brilliant idea to put them into it because they're fantastic anyway. So excited for these horses. Um, hopefully if they can fix the multiplayer with them, they'll be brilliant. I can see like so many mini games with these horses we can do, like horse racing and... Oh, it's so good. And carpets as well, guys. Don't forget. Carpets. So, Giz, what are you going to call your first horse? My first horse is going to be called Clara. <laughs> anyway, going on to seasons, I quite like that idea. Like having, you know, maybe it snows the whole time during winter and maybe in autumn that the leaves change colour. And I mean, are they officially going to be doing this or is this just like Twitter conversation at the moment? Like we might implement this. Um, I, I believe they are planning on doing it. Cool. I, think... I know there's been, sorry. Go on. No, go on. I think this can be good and bad because like if the entire world is suddenly with snow and you're trying to do something without snow like hopefully there's a way to kind of control it in a sense like maybe server side to turn it off i'm sure it will be but i can just see it getting a little bit annoying but when playing well, legit, like... but when playing legit i can see it being really awesome and adding a whole new dynamic to the game well does that mean they'll get rid of biomes then like no. it won't. We won't have a snow biome anymore, or other types of biomes. Well, I don't think it will snow all the time. I think like rain, it will come and go. It's not going to be a whole thing, but it might. Well, if rain it's a season, more... it has to be snow the whole time. It <gasps> snows because it's in the snowy season. So then, if the seasons are changing, then I can hear the famous line: "Winter is coming." Oh God! <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, what I find interesting about the seasons. You know, it's like you already, in a sense, kind of have that when you when you go to a winter area. Uh, I mean, Minecraft doesn't really work like the surface that you travel on is a globe. So it's not like you have like high north points or how south, high south points on the globe, which are much colder. So you already have a snow biome. Is a snow biome going to just disappear so that forests, um, plains, other non non desert areas? can then become snow during the winter. Yeah, I kind of forget that in other countries it snows all the time. Like here we have like a patch of snow in the winter. <laughs> well, but even even if you just have a patch of snow, it's winter. But there's already a snow biome. So yeah. how does the snow biome change? Does, does it get, become summer and a snow biome melts? I think well, if they're they going to do seasons, they have to get rid of the... Uh, snow biome and then just when it's winter s certain areas but that aren't basically anything not a desert has the potential for snow to then hit it maybe they could rename the snow biome to like pine forest biome or something like that so we keep the darker wood because i like that they don't i think they'd have almost have to maybe have like an arctic biome where it's this always snowy but the but the then it would be at northernmost points or southernmost points. But then again, there's no limit to how... Well, there is a limit, but it's very huge to how far yeah. you can travel. So it sounds really neat, but it'll be interesting to see how they implement it. Um, the new launcher, there's not a lot of information out there, but on the new launcher, it sounds like its biggest thing is it is more secure so that people can't uh, steal your passwords. It uses other... I think it uses some secure token method to log you into the servers and I have heard something about if the login servers are down and you can't get on to Minecraft you have to play offline it will still remember your username and when you go on to server you'll have that name <sighs> typically before you'd be like player you know and different things and you can't have multiple That's players good. so it was always a nightmare so any I other see, thoughts like, oh, go ahead oh, on the launcher I did see that it's got like a you can choose which version of Minecraft that you want. I'm not sure if that's ah. going to be like a, a, an actual feature, but it said when when I loaded up the launcher, it came up with at the top with the snapshot and then a drop down box where I could like potentially click on other things. That would be a godsend. That would be interesting. Yeah. 
So, I mean, it really looks like, you know, they're, they're doing a lot of cool stuff. I mean, I continually beg and plead, and it seems like it never happens, for the much-talked-about, many-promised prom long ago, the mod API. Uh, we get all these updates, and everything in bucket breaks, and we have to wait and wait for plugins to be caught up. The mod API is supposed to really help that. Uh, and they keep pushing it and pushing it and pushing it. So I have no idea where the mod API stands, because I don't think they've talked about it in a while. But I'm hoping that it comes out here eventually. All right, so let's move on. Next up is uh, Lydia, who is Minecraft chick. I think her name's Lydia, isn't it? Yeah. Yep. She had tweeted that uh, Minecon 2013 will be in the USA again. So no date announced, no location in America announced. But your guys' thoughts on Minecon 2013 in, in the U.S. Let's just hope it gets announced sooner rather than later, like last year. Yeah. Or the year before. Yeah, yeah. because, <laughs> I mean, these things need planning. Like, people have to plan when they're going to leave to go there. Like, like, say, Piper, for instance, if she's working, she has to plan when she can take the work off and go out to visit. And, like, oh, it's just plan. Yeah. Tell us sooner, please. Plane tickets cost Plane tickets. money. They cost even more money closer to the day. Yeah, well, I mean, last year they did announce um, where it was, or the date, early. Uh, and yeah. I think they announced the Disney part of it um, in, in Paris later, but it was, um, it took a while for them to get all the, like, details that people needed, you know. But hopefully they won't do that again. I mean, obviously here, here the fact that I'm in the U.S., I'm hoping this time they do it somewhere on the East Coast, uh, so it's easier to get to. Plus, I think the East Coast works better for people overseas, like you guys. So, um, and just a little yeah. teaser about Minecon 2013. Uh, we are going to try to have a crew presence there. Um, hopefully, we can mm -hmm. maybe even have an area where we can where we can go, and if people want to come say hi and talk with us, uh, they can. So we're really hoping. Uh, that they announce it soon enough so that we can plan, because it is such a major thing to try to get yeah. all the people from the UK uh, to figure out, you know, how they can get here. Now, there's no way all the crew will be here uh, in America, but hopefully we can have uh, four or five crew there at Minecon, which is definitely doable. But Fingers crossed. Just have to wait and see. <laughs> All right, our next and last gaming news segment is the mysterious post by Bethesda. So now what happened is on uh, Vine.co, which is this like video sharing site, you can only put up like six second videos and they loop. Beth well, Bethesda Softworks put up a video, a uh, six second video on their Vine.co site, and it kind of teased about a game. A lot of the fans were all screaming that it was Fallout, you know, related. Uh, but we're told by somebody on, I think, uh, somebody named Deacon on Twitter, uh, who was affiliated somehow with Bethesda, he said it is not Fallout. Turns out today, we just learned, they've announced it, and what was that game? The uh, that Within. Game. Yeah. So it looks like it's going to be a Resident, it's from the Resident Evil creator, and it's called The Evil Within. Um, did anyone go through the uh, the um, video? I mean, because we just I, found out about this right before. Who can yes. give us a little bit of background on it? Uh, it gives me squeaking. I don't think I'll be watching it. <laughs> it. It looks really good. It was kind of more of a video trailer, though, not really a gameplay trailer. Um, it looks really, really weird. There was like a, a person working in some kind of area with some twisty metal things making something, and then there were these creepy blood everywhere and then this woman kind of appeared out of the blood and she had four arms and oh it was all ugh, gangly and horrible and then this guy with a box head appeared out of nowhere and the door opened on his head and all these tentacle things came out oh it was horrible it looked good but oh scary <laughs> so it looks like a really weird kind of creature game with like maybe a mad scientist I don't know maybe creates things and does sound good though. Yeah, I'm not seeing uh, any information like when it comes to like multiplayer. You know what real type of game it's going to be. If it's going to be the typical Resident Evil type game where it's more single player, exploring, you know, story, 
you know, or if it's going to be something that's more. I don't think they're going the DayZ route for like a sandbox survival type game. No, I think we've had quite a lot of these kind of zombie games, and we've got Daisy coming out pretty soon, I think. So I think maybe it's time to have a bit of a break from some kind of zombie games and more. Let's go back to more kind of scary games, just rather than just zombie games. And this looks kind of like that. It looks kind of like less zombies, more scary, creature type stuff. Well, we know Piper's going to be all over playing this one. <laughs> I stream Piper. I don't like being scared. <laughs> All right, so with that, we've kind of talked about some gaming news. Now what we want to go through is some news related to the crew. So um, I think the first thing that we should talk about is we hit a crew milestone uh, last night. We have reached reached 50,000 subs. Yay, thank you. (laughs) That's insane. It's crazy. It's crazy. (laughs) I remember when it was 5,000. Yeah, I remember when it was like that first night when it was none and then Paul liked us and it shot up real quick. And I was just like, wow. You know, and I was thinking maybe two, 3000 would be our peak. But then as we got going and we saw how people were supporting us and liking what we do, it's just, you know, more and more, uh, people keep coming. So we're really happy with 50 K and it's still growing. So, uh, we're looking forward to another 50. (laughs) We know you're out there. It's a morale boost as well. (laughs) <laughs> just want to do more. Yeah, Absolutely. well, that's one of our goals. Is we are going to try to uh, uh, do step it up, do more stuff, uh, try to add more content. Uh, you're going to see some stuff where uh, there's a few crew playing like a game that's limited to say to, to two or three people, maybe or four player. You're going to see more stuff. Uh, we're going to just we're we're just going to be experimenting. Some things may not work, and if they don't, we'll stop with that. Uh, but if it works, we'll continue it. Um, next big thing. Uh, May 10th, this obviously 2013, May 10th, 2013, 6 p.m. Eastern Time, we are going to live stream again for 24 hours. Woo! Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> now, the big thing about this live stream, we're going to do like before. We're going to play games for 24 hours, but we're trying to raise money for Child's Play charity. Uh, it's a great charity that tries to use the 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 joy of playing games to brighten the lives of children in the hospital. Uh, and there's kids that sometimes are in there, in there for some serious issues. There are kids that are in there sometimes for long stays. Uh, and this charity really helps the hospitals who participate in it to get gaming stuff. And if you look at Child's Play's website, you'll see that it's not all video games. Sometimes it's a, just a simple toy or, or crayons uh, that the hospital needs for the kids. So... We're going to be spamming the heck out of our charity uh, donation link but during the live stream. Uh, I'll put a link right now to a countdown timer that will show you when the stream starts. That way you don't have to worry about your time zones. Uh, but it does have a little uh, widget on the web page that shows where we are currently donation-wise. We're hoping to make $500 uh, for the charity, uh, but we hope it goes higher. But 500 is our goal. Uh, we've already had two people just immediately donate. Uh, I'm assuming that they probably can't be there for the live stream, so they're donating now. And that's fine, too. I do want to stress, though, if you're a child, please check with your parents. <laughs> just don't go take their credit card or use their PayPal account to make a donation unless your parents uh, want to, and, and you should probably have them do it for you. Um, if you can't donate, obviously, that's fine, too. Uh, our goal is just to try to make money for this charity. It's a great charity, and... Um, it should be a ton of fun. Yep. Yeah. I can't I wait be, to do this. Yeah, I should be there again for the entire 24 hours. Are you going to stay for the entire 24 hours this time, Piper? I, I was there last time for 24 you hours. I to... might have had a snooze for like 30 minutes. But <laughs> no, I think this time, because by the end of it, I was getting really like... Oh. Especially with Gizmo, I was winding me up big time. So I think if I actually... She slept for a couple of hours, then Gizmo won't wind me up as much. <laughs> I can't even remember anything past we'll the six AM mark. I, I, I'm so, I'm the same. It got very blurry towards yeah the, the end. last four hours. Yeah, I mean it was Gosh. a lot of fun, and we had some fans who stuck with us throughout the whole thing, which was they amazing. did. Um, yeah, so yeah. <laughs> we're really looking forward to it. We're hoping to earn some money for a great charity. I also want to stress that when you donate through our link, it takes you to Child's Play's website. 
the donation goes directly to them. Uh, they just with that little widget, it just keeps track of people who are donating under the crew ch under the crew's uh, charity event. So it lets us know how much we earned as a group of us and your and the fans for Child's Play. But the money goes directly to them. We do not see a dime. We do not want uh, a dime. You know, we want all this to go straight to them. And they're a nonprofit group, and they put all the money towards helping out these kids. And I, I just think it's, it's going to be a lot of fun. It's an awesome charity. And we hope you guys turn out to watch. And if you can donate, please do. Yeah. All right, next up, we're going to briefly talk about Moonvale. Now, Moonvale is going to be our RPG server. This is going to replace Chaos. Now, what Moonville is going to kind of be, you might have seen the Don't Stop trailers when it, at the end when it took us to Moonvale and kind of talked about it. But we're going to try to have a world where you can play, you can mine and craft, you can uh, earn money with the economy system by selling goods that you've mined and crafted. Uh, and then you can buy land so you can build your house. You can join groups. You know, there can be fighting amongst groups. Um, you know, it's just going to be, in a sense, a lot like chaos is where you can have land and, and everything but a little bit more rpg elements a little bit more on the economy side uh if you're not really into the whole rpg aspect it still gives you a world where you can mine and craft you can build a house once you buy land and, and you could be happy with that so but our goal is going to be here and then in a week or so we're going to take chaos down and we're going to put up a test world with all the plugins and things that we want to use for the rpg server so that we can test it and we'll let you guys test it too so it won't be like all the beautiful towns that you saw at the end of don't stop when i flew around moonvale <laughs> it's just going to be a generic world uh where you guys can do all the stuff we just talked about but it's more for helping us test it if you find problems you can let us know then what we're going to do is take everything we've learned from like a couple weeks of testing uh that world and then apply it to moonvale and then bring moonvale up officially so uh I don't know if you guys want to talk much about Moonvale, anything that you guys want to, to add to the discussion, but we're looking forward to getting Moonvale up. Yeah, yeah, we've been working on this for a while. I don't know how many months it's been now. Quite a long time. Like yeah. A year, isn't it? Almost. Well, yeah. I, mean, I mean, we started work on this RPG world a long time ago, probably over a year ago. Uh, and we got to a point where we stopped because... We were so busy with other things, like I think Mole came up, yeah, um, and just so many things we had going on, we didn't get back to it. So we, we took a break for probably six months, and then we kind of started to get back and say, look, we need to push, we need to get this thing ready and get it out there. So that's what we're going to try to do now. Uh, but it should be a lot of fun, and yeah. you know, I'll put the old Chaos World you know, up on the internet for people to download if they want to play in that world or explore it. All right, so we want to give you guys a first look, and this is a game that some of you may not have heard of, but I think all of you guys should be very excited because this game is amazing, <laughs> and I take all the credit to finding it. The crew, <laughs> none of the crew knew anything about it. The game is called Starbound. Now, it's kind of a cross between Terraria. In fact, the lead, the lead developer of this game was the artist for Terraria, not the main programmer, but the artist. But he's the lead developer for Starbound. It's kind of a cross between Terraria, Minecraft, a little bit of FTL. Um, it's a big, huge sandbox world. Um, they're taking pre-orders right now. It's not out. If you're watching this video, uh, you're seeing, obviously, uh, if I convert it to an MP3, you're not going to see it. But if you're watching this in video form, you're going to see a uh, video of the game. Uh, but it's a, every time you start the game with a new world, it generates a whole new world. There's hundreds of planets. Uh, monsters are generated, you, so there's unique monsters each time. Quests are generated. Uh, you can pick seven races to choose from currently, but they'll probably add more. So it's a very huge universe. You fly around, you go down to planets. Each planet's like a, a whole like terraria world, and there's hundreds of them. Uh, you can you know create your character. There's there's you know it's character uh, creation. There's there's um in a sense, like a workbench type setup where you can craft things. Uh, it just looks amazing. Yeah. Currently, they're taking pre-orders because uh, it's it's not slated to come out in beta until this, the, sometime this year. Um, they're, they've already, as of right now, made three quarters of a million dollars off their pre-orders. 
So uh, they every time they hit like a goal on the pre-orders, they add stuff. So right now what we're looking at is when it hits a million, they're going to give us pets. Yeah. So. Oh, nice. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> oh, what's wrong with pets? <laughs> Sorry. But your guys' thoughts um, after you've looked at all the information out there on this game. It just looks amazing, and it's it's what Terraria could have been. Like they could have developed it or come out of Terraria two or something. But this just, I'm so excited. I have no words. <laughs> yeah, it looks really, really good. It's just the fact that you can go onto a random planet, and it could be like planet purple, or and you can terraform it if you don't like it, so you can make it planet purple, or yeah, I am going to have Piper's planet purple. And I'm <laughs> going to blow it up. I mean, this this universe, it, this world generates is massive. Uh, if you're playing multiplayer, I mean, you'll each spawn in a random part of the universe, and you won't have a ship, you have to kind of like fix your ship or whatever, to kind of start being able to travel. So if you're playing this on like a multiplayer server and you and it's just one that somebody sets up for anybody to play on, there could be people flying around the universe in all these different areas, and then eventually you might encounter each other, and who knows what happens. Uh, but if you're playing with friends, they've also said they're going to have a way to spawn together so that you can start playing the ah. game together. Oh, that's cool. Um, and the go ahead. The also another thing that I like from the the main video that we saw. Um, was that there's so much technology in it as well. It's not just, you know, digging for ore and, and stuff like that. It looks like there's actual technology. I mean, you mentioned the ships, but there was all these different things that they were putting into the house, and if everything was functional, it, yeah, it be like, I don't know, lots of things. I, I'm losing my train of thought because I keep getting all excited. But there's so much potential for it. That's the word I was looking for. So, yeah, very excited. Now you can go to the website, and they do have a um, a uh, roadmap you can click on, and it tells you the percentage of things that they're trying to do, and you can kind of see how far along they are. I mean, they're they're really far along. Um, this game scares me a little bit when I first saw all the information because I'm like, man, it's trying to do so much, and it's like I worry, you know, if you get too much that to, you plan on doing, that it won't work. But really, just watching the videos and reading about it and hearing what the developers are saying, um, I think they're going to pull it off. And what I think is going to be even cooler is they're going to continue to add more to it, in a sense, like Minecraft. Uh, some people have asked about more FTL-like combat, because I don't really know if there's much space combat. I don't think there is. Maybe there is. Uh, but they talked about, after the beta's out you know, next year, that they may add more FTL-ish type combat situations. Uh, which I think would be really cool if you have the potential of flying around and there could be random computer-aided AI ships that come at you and, and you have to make that decision. Do I attack them? Do I, and, and if I win, take their loot? Do I run? Do I surrender? Whatever they might want from me. Um, it just, I mean, this game, It's I hate to say it, but this game really, I think, has the potential. If it does what it says it's going to do and and what it looks like so far, this game has the potential to be maybe not as popular as Minecraft, but this thing has the potential to really just go crazy. I mean, it's I mean, there's going to be so many people wanting to play this game. There's going to be so many Let's Plays and s different people doing series on YouTube. And you can bet yeah. we will, once this game comes out, do those right Definitely. Now. I mean, I'm not going to play anything else when this game comes out. This is just going to be the game I'm going to play. <laughs> I, I, don't yeah, know if they'll sell 10, I don't know if they'll sell 10 million copies like Minecraft has. But, I mean, they've already almost... I mean, they're going to probably get a million in pre-orders uh, the way they're going without really, you know, skipping a beat. Uh, that just shows you how interested people are in this. Now, you know, some people have always asked, what's the price going to be when it goes out of beta? And I don't think they've said. So, um, the cool thing about it right now, the pre-order, obviously it's $15 for a copy, but you can buy a four-pack. And I think the four-pack is like $45 or something like that. Uh, so you can save some money if you got a bunch of buddies and you want to buy it. I've already bought two four-packs so that the crew and I can play it. Um, I may actually buy one more because I don't think eight is enough with the fact that <laughs> everybody in the crew is really interested in playing this game. Uh, all I can say is 
Uh, the the company who's making this, and I should have mentioned this before, is called Chucklefish, which I love the name. <laughs> but I can only hope, Chucklefish, you're taking all that money and you're putting it putting it away and using it for what you need to, but keep them coders going and those artists and everything else and get this game out because we are just dying to play this thing. Yeah. I'm just really, really excited. Um, and I just can't wait to play it. Same as Giz, because I've only just heard about it this week. And I've been reading up on it, and it looks really, really good from what I I've seen. There's quite a lot of humor in it as well, I think. Um, I read about one of the species called the Glitch, and they're kind of like a cybernetic species that are stuck in medieval times. So they only kind of build medieval-type <laughs> areas. It sounds really, really crazy. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, the, it's just really, like I said, I haven't been excited about a game like the, that, you know, like I have been about this since minecraft when i first got it uh, i mean there's a lot of great games i mean i love some of the big titles i mean halo comes out but really the indie developers in the last couple of years have been putting out some really cool stuff uh, yep. and and you're really seeing gaming kind of going a step back really you're seeing a lot of these popular games or these new games coming out especially from indie developers where they've kind of taken a step back and said it's not all about 100% realism in graphics, you know, it doesn't have to be that perfect. You need gameplay. And really, the retro look that this has, uh, and Terraria had, and, and Minecraft's not like a stellar game graphic-wise, <laughs> it doesn't matter as long as it's got good gameplay. Yeah, yeah. I, definitely. I mean, uh, gameplay is, in my opinion, it's the key, the key element. Like, you can have a game... That has terrible graphics, but the gameplay is really fun and it's brilliant. But I think the graphics in this, the backgrounds look gorgeous. I look at some of these pictures, like the lava areas in the background, in the distance, and then you've got the water areas. It's, it looks gorgeous. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, it, I don't want to imply that Starbound is horrible, it, but it has a retro look. <laughs> and I think the reason you can say what Gizmo just said about this game, it is... Retro-y, and it, you know, Terraria style uh, for at least that part of the game. Uh, it is kind of a retro look, but it looks beautiful. And I think because computers are so powerful now, and you're, all, and you're looking at a game that uses this like 2D engine for the Terraria aspect of it, you've got so much power available to you because you're not really pushing the system for these super high res, you know, photorealistic first person shooter world type graphics that you can do all kinds of more stuff. The the like did you see the the picture where the guy's using the flamethrower, the video clip in this game? Yes. Lizzie will love that. I mean it just <laughs> looked good, but you can make things even though it's two D, even though it's not photorealistic, they've done such a beautiful job of adding detail and effects and just I mean I really, like I said, it's a grand plan, but I really think Chucklefish is going to pull this off, and I think they're going to make a ton of money, uh, and uh, I just I just can't wait. Yeah. A very small game can cast a very large shadow. <laughs> All right, so that's it for Starbound. Go Chucklefish. Hurry up, please. We can't wait much longer. All right, so um, another segment is our deal of the week segment now what we're going to try to do here is mention like a game that's on sale as of when this podcast airs which is sometimes hard to do uh, but right now on steam for this weekend you can get portal 2 for 75 percent off good portal deal yes, it's a really good deal awesome yes game. it so if you don't have portal 2 this gets you portal 2 for like five dollars us i think uh, which is dirt cheap so it's a great game. If you haven't played it, you want you know because you've been waiting, or you don't have it, grab it. Um, should we give them a little tease about Portal Two? Something related to us? Yeah. Yeah. Pe people already know anyway. Do they? Well, a while ago they knew. They if they forgot. Well, why don't uh, one of you two go ahead and explain uh, why? In a sense, I picked Portal Two because of this reason. <laughs> um, Gizmo and I are doing a kind of let's play play through type thing of Portal 2 co-op game of Portal 2 so that will be coming to the channel soon 
and it's gonna be funny hopefully <laughs> if we don't <laughs> drive each other insane <laughs> So, yeah, I mean, Portal 2, awesome game. If you haven't grabbed it yet, great time to do it. Very cheap. It'll be that price through, I think, Monday morning or so. Um, and, of course, look forward to seeing Piper and Giz play Portal 2 here on the channel, uh, hopefully soon. All right, our last thing that we want to mention before we close is here is in the, in the show where we would typically answer your questions. Uh, obviously, for this one, we kind of wanted to get this episode out because of Starbound, uh, while you know it's still really hot in the news and a lot of people don't know about it yet. Uh, but if you have questions for us, you'll see a link in the description of this video to click it. It'll take you to a form. You can type in your question and submit it to us. Now, also, if you take the extra step of recording yourself asking the question, and this could be on webcam, this could be like recording your Minecraft carrier or a character asking the question, or it could just be an audio file, like an MP3 or a WAV file of you asking the question. If you do one of those two formats, we'll actually play it in the podcast. So on the, on the YouTube podcast, which is in video format, people would see you if you did a webcam, or people would hear you if you did audio. If we would end up doing an MP3 version of the podcast, obviously if you send us a video, people would only hear you, but they still get to hear you. And we're going to give precedence to the um, audio and video questions, but we'll take text questions too. So whatever questions you might have, be it gaming, be it crew, be it uh, TV, movies, whatever you want to ask us, submit your questions. And we won't be able to use all of them, but we'll try to pick some of the best ones each week and uh, do them. And uh, we're going to keep the link for the questions the same. So if you have other questions, you can go back to that same link and submit them, and we'll try to answer your questions. Yep. But with that, that concludes our first YouTube podcast, The Crewcast. If you guys want to say goodbye, we will head out. <laughs> goodbye! Bye. Adios! Bye. Thanks for watching The Crewcast. We hope you tune in again next time. Compass.